Would you eat crickets for breakfast? No? How about maggots or grasshoppers? Today, insect farming and consumption is very popular in Southeast Asia, parts of Africa, and Latin America. In some rural African populations, as much as 60% of the diet is based on insects. In the West, they've recently been adapted into large-scale farms with insects as a livestock. Keep an open mind and try not to get grossed out. Let's dive into why bug farming might save global warming and the food shortage at the same time. Now, why are bugs being farmed? Picard, a forensic entomologist at Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, studies why some insects grow much more quickly than others. Her research is crucial for police investigations because the type of insects found on a body can help figure out exactly when someone died. But Picard's research on corpse-eating flies is starting to have an effect way beyond autopsy reports. Her focus is now on food. In 2021, Picard became one of the lead researchers at the Center for Environmental Sustainability through Insect Farming, a US-based research center that wants to make farming insects more efficient. There are quite a few reasons why some countries are pushing for an efficiency in insect farming on a mass scale. An excess in greenhouse gases and land usage are huge issues being faced globally, which are bad for the environment. The raising of livestock, which includes cattle, chickens, pigs, and more, is reasonable for a whopping 18% of all greenhouse gases emitted on Earth. To put this into perspective, the transportation industry was nearly 30%. In terms of land usage, 26% of the planet's ice-free land is used for livestock grazing, and 33% of croplands are used for livestock feed production, which totals to 59%. Other sources suggest it's closer to 70%. Such large areas are bad for local ecosystems, reduces size of land that could be used for crops, and displaces wildlife. Insects, on the other hand, produce much less carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane than livestock such as pigs and cattle. In fact, no farmed insect species, aside from cockroaches, release methane at all. On top of this, bug farms take up very little space and could be even integrated inside of populated urban centers. But on the other hand, if humans want to reduce the size of our meat consumption and the size of land they use to farm the livestock on, where are we going to get our protein from? You guessed it, bugs. For all you bodybuilders out there, it turns out bugs are an amazing source of dense protein. 100 grams of mealworms will give you 24 grams of protein, which is an equivalent to 90% lean ground turkey. Mealworms actually have more protein than Atlantic salmon. Per 100 grams, crickets have 20.5 grams, while houseflies just have under 20 grams of protein. Insects also include many vitamins, with soldier fly larvae containing 934 milligrams of calcium per 100 grams, just a handful. But that's not all. This particular larvae boasts more zinc and iron than any other insects, and shockingly more than salmon, chicken, or lean beef. In a small bowl full of larvae, you get one quarter of your daily iron needs and a full recommended daily amount of zinc. In terms of efficiency, farmers prefer insects over traditional livestock. Cattle use 12 times the amount of feed that cricket do to produce an equal amount of protein. Crickets also mature quickly and are typically full grown within 3 weeks to a month. An individual female cricket can lay anywhere from 1200 to 1500 eggs in 3 to 4 weeks. Cattle only become adults at 2 years and the breeding ratio is 4 breeding animals for each market animal produce. Now, here's a question. What's the life of a bug worth? People that are looking for alternatives to eating meat might ask this question when considering adding insects to their diet. In good news for vegetarians, and not so much for the bugs themselves, insects do not invoke much empathy. With exceptions, many people rarely think twice about smacking mosquitoes, let alone the millions of pests killed when farming crops. Those who do mind can rest assured that farmed insects lead net positive lives, with no fear of predators or starvation. Insect welfare is conveniently easy. Cramped, hot, filthy settings in factory farms are cruel for vertebrates. They are in fact ideal for insects like mealworms that thrive when crowded together. One can imagine that there are surprisingly little requirements to set up a humane cockroach farm. Hopefully your neighbors don't get any ideas. 
how does insect farming actually work? It sounds pretty straightforward to begin with, but like with growing livestock or crops, there's a lot more that goes into the details. There are four primary steps to getting insects ready for the market. These are harvesting, cleaning, inactivation, heating and drying, depending on the final product, and rearing method. Harvesting and cleaning. Insects at different life stages can be collected by sieving, followed by water cleaning to remove excretion. Before processing, the insects are sieved and stored alive at 4 degrees Celsius for about one day without any feed. Inactivation An inactivation step is needed to inactivate any enzymes and microbes on the insects. The enzymatic browning reaction can cause the brown or black color on the insect, which leads to discoloration and an off flavor. Heat treatment. Sufficient heat treatment is required to kill bacteria so that the final product can meet safety requirements of certain countries. Drying. To prevent spoilage, the products are dried to a lower moisture content which prolongs shelf life. Longer drying times results from a low evaporation rate due to the Chilton layer, which can prevent the insect from dehydrating during their lifetime. So the product being ground up instead gives it an advantage of more drying. In general, insects have a moisture level in the range of 55 to 65 percent. A drying process decreases the moisture content to a level of 10 percent or less, which is good for preservation. Insect farming in a closed or indoor environment is an important means to making food available continuously year-round, since many insects are available in nature only during certain seasons or months. It is particularly important to increase scale and efficiency of insect production and use for maximum impact to improve food supply and reduce environmental impact. This is especially critical for populated urban areas. This aspect becomes more important every year as the food supply decreases and the human population continues to increase, posing a serious threat to survival. The number of malnourished and unfed low-income people will increase in both rural and urban areas. For indoor rearing, ambient environmental control, quality of feed, and prevention of diseases are needed for proper insect growth and development. So, once you have all your bugs ground up, what type of foods are you going to eat them in? Well, if they're ground into a flour, they can be added to nearly anything, including bread, pastas, or even your baked desserts. You could also eat them as a salty, snacky alternative to chips. Food-grade mealworms are relatively easy to find online and in your local markets that cater to Eastern cuisine. To eat them, all you have to do is fry them in your preferred vegetable oil and let them rest on paper towel. Add a bit of salt and pepper to taste and you have a salty snack that is rich in amino acids, protein, and fiber. They can also be converted into protein powders and bar, which would be a great alternative to whey protein and other supplements that people can't digest. On a mass scale, it would be best for insects to be hidden in food simply on the nutritional label. This would still provide people with eating more sustainable and nutritious food without the bad societal image of actually eating bugs. At the end of the day, insect farms are rapidly growing industry which is estimated to be worth $8 billion by 2030. It's an amazing route to decreasing our carbon footprint and help feed underdeveloped countries or a low-income population. What are your thoughts on insect farming? Comment below, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more tech content every week. Thanks for watching.